Thank you for counting on NBC2. I'm Elise Chingari. Right now, NBC2 is staying on top of breaking news as we work to find out more about a Port Charlotte teenager charged with killing his mother. Polk County Sheriff's Office says 17-year-old Colin Griffith killed his mother, 39-year-old Catherine, in Polk County on Sunday. Our Tampa station tells us that a neighbor said that the two were arguing. Then the boy actually dragged his mother back inside the house. That neighbor said the boy's grandmother owns the home where the murder happened. Now, the sheriff just started a press conference. We'll be sure to have those updates for you here on NBC2 News at 3 o'clock as well as online. As today is September 11th, all day, people right here in Southwest Florida are remembering those killed on 9-11 and honoring the brave first responders who lost their lives 23 years ago. Today, you can head to any Crunch Fitness facility where they're hosting the annual stair climb challenge, as you see here. You'll climb 110 flights of stairs. This symbolizes the 110 floors of the World Trade Center. This is an all-day event that's going on until 11 o'clock tonight at all Crunch Fitness facilities. From your Cape Coral news team, as Southwest Florida's largest city continues to grow, of course we're talking about Cape Coral, well getting out of town when you need to, it's becoming more and more difficult. Now local leaders are hoping to change all of that and hopefully save more lives if another terrible storm hits our area. NBC2's Joshua Cole is local along Del Prado Boulevard with the plans that the city's discussing. Just driving over our bridges from Cape Coral during peak hours can drag. Now imagine the whole city evacuating on those same routes during an emergency. It's why city planners are looking at new solutions. With the bridges, like you said, there's already a lot of traffic on them. In a worst case scenario, a category five storm or impending citywide flooding, 73 hours is how long it would take to get 200,000 people out of Cape Coral. We've seen them. I've definitely paid attention to them where they are. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like there's a lot. Yeah. So that's a bit concerning. New data from the Cape Coral evacuation route study shows by making two big changes, widening the midpoint bridge and adding an interchange with direct access from Del Prado Boulevard to I-75, we can cut time by 18 hours and prevent significant bottlenecking. I'm fearful of, of the growth here. It's too fast and I don't know if the in infrastructure is there. City planners hope these changes will help as the city grows. Looking to 2045, city staff hopes to present this to county planners and FDOT to get more funding to expedite these projects. Still, some wonder if other options are being overlooked. Widening Burnstore Road is probably more important than widening the Midpoint Bridge. That's an evacuation route as I see it. We're not always evacuating to the north. Sometimes we're going eastward toward Miami. That's why part of the study shows improved evacuation times if we extend Collier Boulevard from Immokalee Road up to Alico, though there's no timetable for when any of these improvements could be made. We'll keep you updated. We're in Cape Coral. I'm Joshua Cole, NBC2. Thanks, we know hurricanes in our local forecast anytime soon. Instead, it's the, the heat that is the big story. <laughs> During lunch, Elise and I were talking about just how hot the heat index feels like outside. And right now, the feel like temperatures are close to 107 in San Carlos Park and Benita Springs. 106 is the peak heat index so far today in areas around Fort Myers. So yeah, it's hot, but it's hot even for September in our beautiful part of the world. However, as we take a look at some of the roads across our area, right now the weather is cooperating for anything you want to do outdoors if you can put up with the heat and humidity as at least to so far the coverage of any showers and thunderstorms in our area has been pretty low. Something important to remember for the rest of the day today is that when you look at the visible satellite you can see this boundary that's right there now to the east of Interstate 75. If I lapse the satellites here for you for the past two hours you'll see how that boundary has been moving inland from the Gulf of Mexico. That boundary is the sea breeze boundary and as it continues to move farther and farther inland, what it should help to do is push the widest coverage of showers and thunderstorms to favor areas east of Interstate 75. So not much out there for us right this moment, but we do anticipate wider coverage. And again, because of the movement of the sea breeze, favoring communities along to the east of Interstate 75.